Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our series on urban energy modeling with Dragonfly. And in this video tutorial, we're going to cover the actual visualization of the, the models that are ultimately going to go off to our, our energy simulation engine. Uh, and we're, and we're going to use that sort of visualization to understand what properties uh, are assigned in terms of windows and shades to our, uh, to our various building geometry elements here. So in order to do this, we're going to work our way through. Now, now that we know our Dragonfly footprints uh, have been converted into building elements that have a lot of the properties that we'd, we'd expect them to have for an energy simulation, right? They have uh, a program and a construction set assigned to them. We know that they're conditioned. The next critical thing that we'd want to do uh, is to be able to, to basically wrap all these buildings together into a format uh, so that we can export them over to to the the eventually export them over to the format that the energy simulation is going to accept, right? Because up to this point, we've really only been visualizing just the 2D attributes, right? The, these like you know, right? The actual 2D floor plates that we know Dragonfly models are composed of, uh, right? So it'd be really nice to actually visualize the full 3D models that we know are going to be derived uh, from this Dragonfly one. So in order to do this. What we will need to do is, you guys remember that we, we uh, when we covered the Dragonfly model structure in the very first uh, presentation, right, that we said that Dragonfly models are composed of a set of buildings. And right now, we actually, what we have is just this list of buildings. We haven't actually merged these all together into a Dragonfly model yet. So first things first, before we can actually export these over to a format like Honeybee, uh, to see their, the, what they look like in 3D, we're going to have to grab this Dragonfly model component, this DF model component. Uh, and you'll see it's a pretty small component. It just takes any list of buildings and any list of context shades, and it merges them together into a model, into a Dragonfly model. So as you'd expect, we're just going to take the buildings and connect those up to buildings. Uh, and you'll see out of this component, now we're going to get a, a singular model object that contains essentially all these buildings that have all these properties that we assign to them uh, over here. Uh, maybe I'm just, you'll see by default, we just, the model is just unnamed. I'm going to give it a slightly better name. I said this was a like a, a new district in Buffalo. So I don't know, I'll just call this new Buffalo district. Uh, right, that seems like as good a name as any. Right, and you'll see, all right, that's at least a little bit of a better name for my Dragonfly model. Uh, and then what I want to do, now that I have the, everything wrapped within this one model object, I'm not going to assign any context shade. I'm just going to take this model and I want to translate it over to uh, over to the Honeybee format. Because it, you who watched the first presentation will remember, if I bring that presentation up right now, right? Every Dragonfly model is translatable over to Honeybee objects. And the critical way, you know, the one-to-one -one, uh, comparison happens on this room level. So all the properties we assign to the rooms here should ultimately end up on the, the, honey, the rooms of the honeybee objects. Uh, so in order to do this, there is a special component under the serialize tab. So you'll see the serialize tab just has to do with writing Dragonfly models uh, to various different formats. Uh, and so there are ways to save the whole model into a file or to save and export as a GeoJSON. The one that I'm interested in right now is this DF model to honeybee component. So I'm going to drop this on the canvas here. And you'll see that this component takes our Dragonfly model as input, right? There's a, there's a Dragonfly model input here. So I'm just going to go connect this up. And you'll see we actually have a lot of different options on how we want to export this Dragonfly model over to HB models, right? And so this is essentially what's happening when we go and export, um, export our, our, uh, our, our Dragonfly model over to, you know, ultimately Energy Plus is, is going to have each one of these Honeybee models as its own IDF, this Energy Plus IDF file. So, all right. So, to get this component to run, though, I'm just going to ignore everything else for now. We just need to connect a Boolean toggle up to the run. So, I'm going to do that right now. I'll double click on the canvas, type Boolean toggle, and we'll connect that to run. And uh, you'll see, right, when we don't run it, we're not getting anything out of this component. But when I do set it to true, You'll see, ah, interesting. So instead of actually getting a singular honeybee model from our Dragonfly model, I'm actually getting a list of models, right? I'm, in this case, I'm actually getting one honeybee model per building in the Dragonfly model. So if I want to actually scroll through and see what these look like, hmm, let's see, we got a lot going on in our, in our Rhino scene right now. So I'm going to go and turn the preview off on these color room TD attributes. 
Maybe we'll turn it back on in a little bit. Um, and let's see. I guess this is fine the way to have the still have the footprints in the rhino scene. But I'm just going to use a native grasshopper list item component to select one of these models out of this whole list. And let's see. We've got a total of 13 models or, you know, indices from 0 to 12. So I'm just going to make a slider going from 0 to 12. And I'm going to use the grasshopper shortcut for that. I'm going to do 0 less than 12. Uh, and that will automatically make a slider for me that goes from 0 all the way up to 12. Right there we go. It looks good. And this will allow me to just select one of the models out of our various list, you know, the list of models being exported here. And let's see. So I can take, let me see. If I go over to Honeybee, uh, right, we have various uh, different different components that help us visualize all the Honeybee attributes assigned to these Honeybee models. I mean, a lot of these, right, are the same that we just assigned to the Dragonfly object. So I don't want to get too detailed, but Maybe this HP visualized by type, this will actually allow me to uh, see what the 3D geometry looks like and see what, you know, the various walls, roof, floors, windows are. So, all right, let's connect up a Honeybee model to this. And we'll see, okay, so it looks like this first Honeybee model is just this one story building right here. And we can see it's actually not a very interesting model, all right? Yeah, it's just, okay, we got a single story. Looks like it's composed of five rooms, right, uh, with each from the core perimeter offset. And you guys will actually notice that uh, like the export process of Dragonfly to Honeybee has automatically included all the other buildings in the model as context shade, right? And this can be very important, especially, I mean, this is a fairly flat and horizontal district, but if you guys were modeling a downtown district, right, all these skyscrapers next to each other, it's really important for you to account for the neighboring buildings as, as context shade. So, all right, and you can actually see that each and every building is having the other ones exported as context shade. But you know what? I mean, you know, especially when we're all the way over here, right? This little building really doesn't care about all this context shade over here. That's just going to make the simulation run longer. So what I'd ideally like to do is just set a radius beyond which I don't really care if the context shade is there. And you'll actually notice that there is a shade distance input for this component. So if I hover over this, it'll tell me it, wa it wants a number and Rhino model units for basically what that radius should be after which we really don't care about context shade. So maybe if I plug in a value of, let's say, 50, or, uh, let's see, yeah, 50, I'm going to uh, basically make a panel with 50 inside of it, and I connect that to the shade distance. Right now you're seeing, okay, we're getting only the shades that we care about around each and every one of these models. Right? So this is a much better way. It's going to be a much faster energy plus run. Because right, all these uh, we're not getting all the geometries that are far away from each other, um, and uh, right, and and so it's generally desirable. So setting a shade distance is generally generally a good idea. Let's see what else uh, would we want. So you guys will notice actually, right? So this building right here is a like I think it's a ten-story building, but you'll notice that when we uh, have exported it, let me see if I can find this in the list here. Yeah, right. We're only getting a single story exported here. And some of you may have already figured out what's going on here. So the way that by default that, that we export things into Honeybee, uh, all of the actual stories that are on top of this building are represented via a multiplier. So multipliers actually can get translated over to Energy Plus, and they will affect the results that you get out of Energy Plus so that they can account for uh, right the fact that this building actually has 10, 10 footprints, uh, or sorry, 10 you know stories instead of just the one that we're modeling here. So you see this is another strategy that makes your, your you know, potentially can make your energy simulations really fast, right? Because you're just modeling a story once, and then you're using the multiplier to represent, uh, you know, what happens over the full height of the building. You know, for our purposes here, especially because we're just using this to visualize what the models are, I'm, I'd rather export the fully detailed geometry. So in this case, I'm going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to set use multiplier to be false instead of being true as it is by default. So I'll just pull up a Boolean toggle, and it's already false. And now when I connect this to use multiplier, right, you guys will see, okay, now I'm actually getting the full geometry exported from here. I'm actually, you know, and you'll see this affects all the other buildings too, right? You're not just getting a single story anymore, right? You're getting the number of stories equal to the, uh, right, the, the number of Dragonfly stories. All right, you can see, I mean, add plenum, I think that's, you know, I already gave you, showed you some images in the first uh, uh, presentation that sort of demonstrates what that uh, 
uh, that workflow is, is a ceiling adjacency, right? So by default, actually each story is kind of a simulatable unit and the both the roofs, uh, the ceilings rather, and the floors of each each uh, story are adiabatic, uh, right? And to be honest, in a lot of cases, when you have a building of just the same stories repeated, that's a perfectly fine assumption in a lot of cases, right? Because the buildings above, the stories above you and below you will be at the same temperature as the, uh, you know, as your current story. And so, uh, and so, yeah, so it's a perfectly acceptable, uh, you know, using adiabatic boundary conditions as a perfectly acceptable way to do that. If you really do want to solve, you know, interior boundary conditions, maybe it'll, it'll help actually for me to show. Let me turn this off and I'll use the, uh, let me see, this native grasshopper visualized by BC. This will allow you to see that actually, even though the roof and the ceiling are adiabatic, here, let me, uh, I'm just going to do some customization here. I'm going to just connect the surface and the wireframe here and turn the preview off here. All right, you can actually see that the interior walls are still being modeled with surface boundary conditions. So you are capturing that heat flow from the perimeter to the core and vice versa when you export your models this way. Uh, the only thing is it's just that the roofs and floors are going to be are going to be adiabatic, right? As you see here, right? So, so you'll just you won't have any heat flow from one story to the other. Again, if we, you know, if you really want to change this, you can set uh, ceiling adjacency to true, um, and uh, and that that'll usually solve adjacencies for you. Uh, yeah, in this case, right, we see all those interior uh, ones have disappeared, right? And they're now actually surface boundary conditions. Uh, if I were to, to check that. But all right, we digress a little bit. I'm going to go back. I'm going to just delete this Visualize by BC, turn the preview back on. Uh, and this will basically, and, and I'll, I won't solve ceiling adjacency in this case. So all right, so this is exactly where we were, uh, you know, after we, we just uh, set use multiplier to false. Um, there are a few other things like cap shades. Like you'll notice that there's no, you know, top to the shade. If you want to cap them, that's an option there. But generally, right, so you guys can see how, like, the, logic for how uh, detailed of a model you want to export, how detailed of an energy simulation you want to run, it's all embedded as part of this export process from Dragonfly to Honeybee. Um, okay, all right, so now that you guys have kind of seen this, maybe it's, a, you know, we're still, the fact that we have to scroll through our buildings one by one to see what each one of them look like is a little, uh, you know, maybe not exactly what we want. So it would be really nice maybe if just for visualization purposes, not for simulation ones, if we could just only export a singular honeybee model uh, instead of the list of ones that we have right now. And you'll see that's actually what this object per model uh, input is meant to address. So you see you can plug in the, the text that says just district if we hover over this here, right? And plugging in the word district will ensure that all of the buildings get exported into a singular honeybee model instead of the default, which is building, where basically each each building, Dragonfly building, gets exported to a separate Honeybee model. You'll see there's also even an option for story, right? You can run even each, every individual story as a separate Honeybee model if you wanted. Uh, it's probably at a level beyond what we really need to do here. So I'm just going to set the object for model. I'm going to double-click the canvas and bring up a panel and then type district. So this way, right, we can have a single model where we see... Yeah, we can see everything together. And this is great for visualization purposes uh, right now. You know, in fact, while we're making the visualization better, you'll notice that we still have these kind of somewhat ugly red uh, grasshopper lines. I'm just going to change those to be black by clicking over here and dropping the value down of this. Yeah, that looks just a little nicer. I can read that this drawing a little bit more easily. Uh, right? It's just the visualization thing, but yeah, but this will help us here. So one thing you guys will notice, right, we actually, two important things about our model right now uh, that we'd really like to change. The first is that we don't have any windows, right? So I, I said at the very beginning that that was our, one of the critical things that we wanted to change. Uh, so first things first, we should probably just make sure that we assign some windows here. The other thing you guys will notice is that all the roofs right now are adiabatic, and we might want to change those so that we actually have, you know, account for the heat flow and loss through the roof. But I see that we're running a little late on time right now. So I think we'll do both the assignment of windows in its own video, give it its own amount of time, uh, and we'll do the assignment of the the uh, roofs and, and floor uh, and ground boundary conditions in, in its own separate video too. Uh, so thank you guys again for making it through this one, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.